Yeah, I, th I, I would say uh, that you can, in that collection, you can see three sort of um, uh, strands of video art, let's say. So you have uh, the first three uh, were extended. And when I first started looking at video art in the, in around that time, the sort of 80s, you know, early 80s, um, most video art was extremely long. And, the, and in a sense, the, um, one of the, what video art was trying to do was to say, we are not film and we are not television. And one of the ways it was able to do that was by extreme length. So, um, mm -hmm. And it was, oh, I, it was so difficult to watch. So I'd go to screens and, and you'd sit through hours of, you know, 20 minute things like those first few. And I found that very, Don't very difficult. Don't be too rude. Well, no, I mean, but I, the thing is, <laughs> this is why I started making it. So, so Blue Monday, for example, is, yeah. is designed to be, to use the language of the pop video uh, to put across the message. So it's the complete opposite of that, like, I'm going to make a video, make it, I'm going to deliberately make it really long so that it's not television. I was, you know, well, we were specifically we were wanted like to that. be we television, were, yeah. uh, you know, to, to say this is television. You know, so Jeffrey Hinton is doing that. He's taking television and commenting on it. He's stretching it. But, you know, also that probably would have been screened in Heaven, you know, which is a famous great club or whatever. So the context yes. in which it would be shown is probably not necessarily a well, cinema. Is, uh, yeah. Thirty years later, and you later. wouldn't have been expected to watch it. it. It would have been a background behind the, the DJ. So that's probably, the probably in the yeah. case of Jeffrey Hinton. Yeah. I mean, in, in the um, uh, the first, what's it called, Keris Keris Win Evans. Yeah. I once um, got into a fight with him because his, his, <laughs> there was a screening <laughs> and his video was showing. And I turned it off and I put my video on. And came and <laughs> <laughs> but I just, you know, I just, I, his, his stuff was very, I mean, it was very, very beautiful and, and very well considered, but I, but I was incredibly impatient, you know, and yeah. um, so nothing was longer than three minutes. Kind of thing. Yeah, well, I have similar sort of thing. When the kind of um, training at St. Martin's was, was, was this notion that if, if it, there was no entertainment in the piece, that somehow it would become political. And this is a, a structuralist step. Uh, a proposition of theirs but in fact it's not the case at all it, it, people just get bored and they don't feel political uh, I mean I, you know one can understand that different periods give rise to certain thoughts but uh, my one of my ways in which um, was about time and duration yeah mm -hmm. that, that I, I realized too that uh, the world was changing and that, that this feeling that art had to be we, we use that phrase duration it wasn't around then uh, immersive is another new word which stands in for time as well so so these these those kind of notions I, I was challenging and also in a more interesting way I thought the program did show it was a genuine move on my part to connect up with popular culture and the 80s uh, I, I thought when Jeffrey Hinton stuff kicked in with all those bands I and mean, it, it was really exciting you know after the last session in the sense that you were he was DJing and jamming in and slamming in things that it was just a kaleidoscope of uh, you know terrible bands and things but but um, at the same time it just had that sort of excitement in that popular culture can be reused as a site of avant-garde experimentation mm -hmm. and it clash you get the plus side is it's it's got a drive to it and you know, you know the tunes always nice to see Michael Jackson um, but uh, but on the other hand it is sort of swaying your head and taking you in, in a transformational Oh, moment. So that's, mm. I, good, yeah. I think the other, so the other two of the, th of the three things I sort of identified the sort of uh, strands in a sense. So we have the durational, let's call it. Then we have the um, let's oppose tilt and Blue Monday or and uh, Gorilla Tapes, uh, Commander in Chief as a kind. So we have the aesthetic scratch, let's call it, and the <laughs> sure. and political scratch. Yeah. And. Um, Duvet Brothers are always, no, this is the one that is always gets shown uh, of ours. That's why you had to walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it before. Um, uh, but we, we also did a whole load of stuff that was purely um, it was aesthetic experiment, but using the idea, or also shooting stuff, and then, but then using the kind of scratch editing techniques um, as a way of exploring um, messaging, not necessarily in a directly political way. But which is, I think, is, I think there's a, a, um, a quite a obvious distinction in that program when it hits your first one, uh, tilt. Yeah. yeah. Um, in that, the I think there's very much more intention in the editing. 
mm. um, when it hits yours, and the, and the Dubé brothers sure. and Gorilla Tape. Yeah. The, so the, 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 the and the, the stuff before that is like, wow, you can collide this shit with this shit. Mm. And it's like and loops, it's, isn't it? And it's loops and it's and flows. it's not really intentional. It's about collisions, you know, and it's yeah. about stuff happening yeah. and and then and mixing and whatever. And, and Whereas, he would have been pushing pause and play live. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, whereas it comes to yours, it's, I, I, say, it's, it's much more musical, I would say. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But can, can I ask you a question? I don't think I've ever asked you this about the soundtrack. Stop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wh- yeah. So, did you just have a drum beat and then oh, in, create uh, the music? Or? In Branson, that's just. Uh, yeah, that's all created. Yeah, I mean, I was in bands and things, so that my friend uh, Pascal Gabriel, who, who went on to be quite a successful producer, um, couple of houses in France he uh, he had he had a drum machine and uh, so I got that beat from him mm. uh, and then uh, then I put but that was one of my basic things a, a lot of my other stuff is much more complex than that going to, to recording studios yeah. and things and, and Tilt is um, they went on to be Swing Out Sister oh, okay. they, they were friends and uh, oh, I see. and they, so then you mixed in then you took the samples of the voices and uh um, yeah, that was really thing. simple. That, 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 yeah. that, that, that was very simple. I mean, uh, I don't know if the audience knows Absence of Satan or, or those. Mm. Yes, Frank knows Smoke. They're, they're uh, done in big studios. Uh, and, and again, that was actually one reason why uh, they sound. Oh, it, I, I still. I mean, without saying self regarding, they still sound good because, in a way, if, you, if you're just in an edit suite using the sound you can, it, it never sounds that great. Whereas if, if you could go to a student and bring, it, bring the pictures back, you get this sort of Phil Spector bigness mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And it's all in tune. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, we, we should, we, well, how long do we have? Should we ask questions or if anyone wants to ask us a about question? Five more minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did. I did start off on a, a slight, slightly, I, I was being just slight facetious, but that thing about appropriation, I, I mean, I thought it was interesting in, in a way when I saw Tilt, I hadn't thought of it before, but, but there I was using, um, I mean, the distinction I was trying to make was initially, uh, we, we were using news footage and any old thing off the television, but applying, if you like, a, an art school sensibility to it, so, so that you knew it was an artist, or you knew it was being driven for satirical political comment, you, you know, whereas I think appropriation today... As I said, is it, people will take, um, for example, Elizabeth Price's piece where she films in uh, Stanley Picking, uh, Picker's house, I think it's Picker and Picker, um, and he was a very rich man uh, with a, who had a makeup business, and he, bought, he built this house, this beautiful house that contains exquisite examples of modernism, and the camera, there's no narration, I don't know if anyone's seen it, um, but, but the camera just does these lovely shots all around the room, but... But, but in a way that it's sort of appropriation of a different age. And I think that's the big theme now. People, people feel that, that you make a video, but you can go to perhaps an area like a rare film you might find in um, Cuba or something. And that becomes a, a legitimate sort of starting point for a piece. Whereas I liked the, the moment in the 80s where we were taking this sort of rubbish television, crap television, <coughs> and actually making it really rather, you know, quite sort of, spectacular and, and interesting I, I think that that's where I quibble sometimes because the trouble is if you get these classy rare things and you're making work it's hard to know where you are <coughs> and, and, and exactly how much you've done that that's the danger anyway I'd say and, and you are in a sense running on the coattails of something with a sort of exquisiteness uh, yeah I mean I, you can ask me about that but I, I think it's a, a fair point the, uh, the other form of appropriation that's around now is mashup. So you, YouTube is full of mashups, and so that's a, effectively like a populist version of Scratch Video. I mean, and, yeah. um, well, and it's I, like, as, a, as a kind of thing, they don't call it Scratch, but it's everywhere, isn't it? It's on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, it's, mashup, it's just yeah, called Mashup. Yeah, yeah. And some of it's political, so, um, you know, and, and it takes on really uh, powerful issues, you know, uh, all yeah. sorts of people uh, dealing with all sorts of stuff. Um, but interestingly, I did a night uh, which was called Scratch vs. Mashup. So I showed uh, a Scratch video. So I'd show a George Barber video, for example. Then I would show a, um, a contemporary mashup video that maybe had, had sort of resonances of George or whatever. Or not necessarily yeah. ever, that yeah. that person's ever seen it, but, you know, we could see. Mm. And then people had to vote. And so you'd go through the night and you'd see 20 videos and there was a vote. And it was like, what, who's yeah, going right. to win kind of thing. Right. Good, really good fun. But the interesting thing was that what I found was that... Um, the pe- people came because they wanted to see the old scratch stuff, 
mm. and they undervalued the mashup mm. stuff because it's just YouTube stuff yeah. and it's all out there and they've seen it yeah. all and it has no value. And I think that's really, really interesting sort of problem for filmmakers, for, for makers, mm. is that when we um, made our stuff, it was seen by literally initially tens of people, then hundreds, and then maybe thousands, and eventually got onto Channel 4, and it got screened once on Channel 4, you know, and there was no YouTube or whatever. So, I mean, literally it was seen by, you know, maximum tens of thousands of people or whatever, or when it went on television. Yes, no, I know what you're saying, yeah. But yeah. now, you know, everything is sort of out there, and there's lots of it, and it's all available, and it's all sort of devalued, and I think that's a... Well, that's a complex argument. I mean, if you, if you took, um, say... Um, a piece. Sorry, his name's gone. Who who did the uh, lights going on and off in um, Martin 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 yeah. Yeah. Now he did a piece which was just a piece of blue tack on a wall. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now looks lovely in on a wonderful white cube wall. You know, with perhaps a hundred yards of white space, and you mm. you come up against a piece of blue tack. But you know, in the corner of this room, the work would look nothing. So it, it's an interesting way in which yeah. values accrue to things. The framing, the yeah, setting, I think, yeah, I think it is. That's an issue. Mm. The the trouble is with YouTube is is we sort of watch it neurotically. That sorry, that is the right word. I think I say erotically for a minute. So, but, uh, so that you kind of always feel there's something else you could be doing. Yeah, uh, I, I think there it's. I think it's common to everyone. There, there's a sense in which even if you kick off on something like a clip of Goddard, something say uber quality you, you're always like oh god I might have to go and feed the cat or whatever the, 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 mm -hmm. the one's never it never captures one fully and I, and I think sometimes when I send my stuff out to galleries you, you feel like that that they it'll just be on a laptop and they'll be going yeah 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 it's beautiful is that a generational issue as well though is it that I, I mean, I'm just interested. I think it's the framing. It's like, because you know, if um, if you discovered Scratch in the '80s, you would you were um, you know because we got a lot of publicity, didn't we? Because mm -hmm. we we were seen. Um, so all the um, so well, newspapers. Well, I did spend and, a lot of time promoting it too, you know. Yeah, you, you did. Because <laughs> we George had the idea of making a tape, and it was a compilation. Yeah, it was a couple of tapes. It was a good idea. But yeah, uh, so. we got so we got a lot of little sort of uh, pieces in um, you know glossy magazines and what have mm. you talking about this phenomenon. You know that there's a thing happening yeah. where people are taping stuff and editing it. You know. Yeah. So there was, it was a kind of cult thing, and it was um, mm. you know and we we'd get book we get we once went on Saturday morning television to talk about it. You know that sort of. <laughs> It was, yeah, you know, it was quite that. odd. I mean, you know, with the kids, kids TV and, talking uh, about art, you know. We were on the cover well. of the Sunday Times and that magazine once, uh, which, which, which is interesting uh, because you know, if you think of uh, lots of other art, uh, I mean, it was quite, quite a lot of press we got. But the trouble is it wasn't sort of art press. I think, I think yeah. in a way it's, that was quite interesting, yeah. Um, in a way, I suppose, you know, actually, Scratch Video, you know, if you think about video art, to have an actual identified um, style, style is unusual. It's unusual, yeah. and I think that's yeah. probably the last big one, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it, yeah. I don't know, every, you know well, what I mean? Conceptualism. Uh, <laughs> there are a few minimal. Uh, yes, I see what you mean. Uh, um, it, it was quite a simple proposition that, that, mm. that you felt these people were editing in a certain way, and it was quick and it was music driven. In those days, video art was a separate. It wasn't art. It wasn't. It was a separate thing. So there was video art festival. So you go to Holland to the uh, Worldwide Video Festival, and there was one in Bracknell, wasn't there? Oh yeah. And they were they were separate things. So it was only video art, and but it was <coughs> and it was very rare that it was shown in galleries. There was once sort of once twice the yeah. uh, pluralists yeah, at the sure. at the Tate. Um, but that changed, as well, that changed some years later. You know, when Douglas mm. Gordon came through sure. and oh, yeah. uh, Julian yeah. Waring, yeah. and there was a suddenly video art. But it's slightly. Yeah. It's like it was a slightly later thing, wasn't it? That Absolutely, became yeah. Part of uh, video art was at the time as well. The the, the film crowd, in a way, the video the technology was pretty poor, so it didn't look like a goer. I, I, I think so. People also, in a way, the film crowd looked at, down on video artists because it looked tacky to them, that, and the image was quite tacky. But they were quite happy slowly to refilm off the screen and put it back on Super 8, which I, I yeah. assume is a connection of the first pieces that, that they were throwing, uh, showing, you know, flicking it from video back to film. Um, but as, as, as with everything, I, th I think there are lots of um, interesting things in, in the way that painting has is, is felt to lost steam. Uh, you know, video is something that's quite compact. You go somewhere that might be an edit suite, um, 
and, and you have this thing that you can send out easily distributable uh, whereas installations it, it's quite hard for artists who just want to make installations unless they're very famous to sort of keep that up it's, it's, it's quite hard so so video is quite a handy uh, it's just amazingly now uh, you know it couldn't be better you on a, a little uh, stick i can have my life works on a memory <laughs> stick you know it's, it's quite amazing isn't it it's mm. not hard um, to turn up somewhere and put on something. Mm. In fact, video artists are the luckiest in that sense. It, you know, another person might have days and weeks on doing a show, but uh, if you're really going to do the simple five or six screens with projectors, it's like a day's work to maybe fix that up. So, yeah, yeah, I think uh, there are advantages to it. Mm. Anyone got any questions for Vic yeah. or George? Is there any uh, sort of link between sea squashing and DJing or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there was, yeah. 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 Well, that was, uh, so I, I don't, I can't remember the precise yeah. chronology, but certainly there was this, we knew about this thing going on in New York, which was, um, you know, sort of... Well, the audio uh, is already there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it was Africa Bambata yeah. and all that kind of yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. So we'd heard all that. Um, so, so that sound, that sort of yeah. scratchy sound was, was in the air, wasn't it? Well, there was a thing called a green gate, which was a computer where one floppy disk could have one word on it. A lot of my early work, each word you hear on Absence of Sainting was a floppy disk. So, yeah, the, the technical music was ahead. Uh, and also, there, there's not much copyright problem copying sounds. It got very difficult with mu with video. It's Actually, it's strange. It's very relaxed now. Lots of these galleries show things off air, and they don't seem to care. But I, mm. it, it's, um, yeah, <laughs> much better than it was. We, we were always constantly freaked out by the people. Every question, every time you ever went anywhere, people go, what did you do about copyright? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so when it was screened on Channel 4, Blue yeah. Monday, for example, it was, somebody had to sit down and work out where all the clips came from and then pay them right. all. Yeah. Thousands of pounds, yeah. you know, yeah. just for seconds, you know, like 10 seconds from ITN... Five seconds from wherever, you know, yeah. Biz News or something. You know. that, that reminds me of uh, John Oswald, you know, in Plenderphonics, where um, he, it's an anti copyright thing, but oh, it's interesting yeah. that the music, I remember having a studio in the 80s with a two seconds of sample time, you know. Mm. It's interesting that the music was a driving force in the visuals as well, wasn't it? It's like sure. visual sampling in a way. Yeah. Yeah. But I asked, as I tried to say at the beginning, there was some sort of hedonistic thing going on in the mid 80s. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, as well as the mining strike, it seems really <laughs> bizarre. But there was a lot of politics going on. But there was a, mm. a London crowd, you know, the art school crowd. You know, were, were kind of really into fashion. This was the um, boy George and, and kind of cross identities. You'd have, you'd have thought the world was perfect, but of course they they sort of in a way they made themselves famous, and uh, I mean, that was quite interesting the way they did that. I remember the fascination with the sample and the possibilities that it gave. You know, the mm. appropriation side. Of Sure. Being able to yeah. connect yeah. things or put things together in, in a way that wasn't possible before. It yeah. comes across yeah. visually. But sure. Well, there was also uh, the idea, so behind Blue Monday, um, there was, at the time of the miners' strike, um, there was, I, I was, there was a story about an editor who, there was a, an event that took place, um, a, a riot between police and um, miners. And the editor at ITN was told to reverse the order of the shots so that the miners were shown to be starting the riot, whereas in fact what had happened was the police had attacked the miners. And that was, and, uh, and because I was in the unions, this, so the, the editor went to the union. I mean, he, he had to do the edit, but he went to the union, and, and so this story came out that, 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 this had, that this had happened. And there was a very explicit... So when, once, what happened during the miners' strike was that you would, there would be constant benefits, and uh, so you could, every time you went out... You'd meet people who who had some sort of connection with the miners, so you're getting these stories coming through, sort of street level, as it were, and then you're seeing what was on the news, and the news was, you know, um, the miners are, really, are are violent, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, and they're out of all or whatever. So, uh, so Blue Monday, in a, in a sense, was a, a deliberate attempt to take that footage and re-edit it back, you know, so to take the thing that had been already been distorted by the news and d distort it back as a kind of counter propaganda, you know. Um, so that was the, uh, and also it's quite as well written in the sense that the shots, the cuts between, um, say, the Russian per mm. military parade and the Tory party, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, no, it's, it's well put together. Yeah. Mm. Anyone else got anything they'd like to ask? I just wondered um, what you thought about Adam Curtis in relation to um, kind of 
the scratch video and the way that he worked the images in the documentary? Yes, so uh, what was the last one? The, uh, the, 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 the climate change. Oh, no, that was, that was the Afghan, Afghan war yeah. Yeah. one. Yes. Um, I, I, I really liked it. I really liked it. Um, uh, it's, it takes a long time to watch. I think I watched it over a week. Okay. <laughs> we had a screening. We, uh, we uh, brought people, we uh, invited people to our house and uh, projected it, and um, people came, and then we collected money. Which was uh, which so you're was, a big fan. Well, no, because it's just I was interested. Well, because of Scratch, you know, so I was interested in the <laughs> yeah, in the. Yeah. In it's the not really exactly to like Scratch, really, do you? No, but well, it's in terms of appropriation, I think. Well, no, but he, he, I think he it's a bit of a distraction, to be honest. In a sense, yeah. I mean, I think what's happening is it's, it's an what these are his films are effectively essays, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. where he takes a position and then he. He, he sort of uh, explains it and he uses the, yeah. the film, the well, footage to evoke. someone to search out the archives for yeah. things that hadn't been used, so there are a lot of odd shots in it. Yeah. They're fascinating, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's a really, really, really interesting story and an uh, interesting take. Um, but it's but more like Chris Marker, isn't it? It's an it's a, it's, it's a accepted form, the essay film. Mm. So, so it's definitely an essay film. Mm. You, you could change the, the order of a lot of the images and it's still work out much the same if you sort of, because it's been driven by me uh, uh, in the voiceover yeah uh, so yeah I mean it's uh, one of the people who came to that um, that night when we showed it was was basically well we could have just done that that could have been 10 minutes long they could have just if you took all the voiceover and put it together you could make a really really <laughs> tight interesting 10 minute film and, it would, and you'd learn as much you know so. well no that's a bit too reductive I, I think partly the doodly nature makes you feel more frightened Mm. Uh, and, and more, it feels more conspiratorial as sort of those lengthy shots. I like the shots in it where people, before the soldiers know the camera's on, these strange conversations and odd bits that they wouldn't use in the news. Mm. Uh, like trying to find the focus on someone who's dying before they get the shot of the body. Mm. No, so they, they'd be into the news, wouldn't it? Because it's so, it seems so insensitive. Mm. But it's funny as a viewer, you think, of course, a cameraman, someone's dead, but of course, the camera still needs to get the focus. Take the shot. Yeah. Okay. Time for one more question. If anyone wants to ask anything. I thought it was quite interesting. The still life, um, um, with the sort of the stillborn, still life. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, but, um, yeah. It could be quite uncomfortable. Offensive. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. of somebody advertising Chanel Number no. Five, and somebody's dead baby in a bottle. You know. Mm. It's, you know, yeah. It, as I said, it was, example, it was yeah. a sort of eighties yeah. hedonism, that, of yeah, without I mean, any the 80s, feeling. Yeah. <laughs> With all this sort of loads of money thing, yeah, yeah. And yeah. sort of Harry Enfield, you know, making a joke of all that. I think it's um, it's something that I suppose is part of the history, part of mm. the culture of the time. But I suppose um, people, if somebody's baby is dead and it's in a bottle, there's something of the Victorian yeah. about it as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I like the fact that the Chanel was backwards. Yes. So that meant that you were in the bottle. Yeah. That was what was what I how I read it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was interesting. Living in the bottle. That was a, that was a <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, that would probably be. Well, I wonder whether that was made to, to be shown in a space or to be shown in a room. It was the co-op. I think that would have. I think he he was hoping to offend the co-op with that. Terrace. The, the, the yeah, filmmakers co-op. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. It was shown. I think I was there. It was shown right. at Super Eight because I, I went to, to art school with Keris. Yeah, okay. yeah. And um, no, he was quite. A, I mean, he he got a camera and started doing these things. He, he did have his own. Uh, it, it did look striking uh, when he first started showing it. Well, thank you both very much. Right. That was really really interesting. Thank, thank you for coming. <laughs>